Hi everyone, welcome back to the Strawberry Loli channel. Today I am going to be reviewing the recent Odin's Eye Jewel Shine Singles Eyeshadow Collection. I purchased every single shadow that they released, which is 42 in total, 12 multichromes and 30 shimmers. Technically, I only have 29 of the 30 shimmers right now because Odin's Eye mistakenly sent me two of the 012 Lucy shade twice, and the 013 Samantha shade was missing from my package altogether kind of annoying only because I really really wanted to give you guys the full swatch set but whatever I emailed them and my missing shade is on its way already so basically I got both of the exclusive discounted bundles that they had at lunchtime for both the multi-chrome and shimmer formulations you do get a free empty 12 pan eyeshadow palette with the multi-chromes bundle and then you get a bunch of the singles cases with the shimmers bundle which I have somewhere in the back but I'm not going to use those. I actually purchased a bunch of these 12 pan palettes in addition to the free one simply because I like the fact that they're plastic, they're compact and they have a clear window pane. I already transferred my Cleona Dragon Fruit palette into one of them. Look how perfect and compact that is. This is like one third or one fourth the size of the original packaging, which not only took up so much space, it was just clunky and bad quality. Like the mirror was all warped and cheap looking, the hinge broke immediately upon opening the palette. It was just a hot mess and I'm just so much happier to have it in this format. I can actually bring this to travel with me now and I'll actually be more inspired to use the shadows more often now that I'm able to see them directly through the cover. So the palettes come with an optional little slip card for the cover as well as stickers to decorate with if you so wish but since I'm like a boring minimalist adult at this point I will not be using any of these well it's not even like a minimalist thing it's more just so for practicality like I am the type of person who just really values being able to see at a glance what colors I'm going to be working with I appreciate cute or intricate um, you know beautiful outside packaging as much as the next person I appreciate the design aspect but I'm never gonna get mad per se at a classic convenient you know clear cover type of packaging that lets me know from the get-go what I'm working with okay so let me show you all of the swatches first I tried my very best to take them all in direct sunlight uh, not to be dramatic or anything but it was a literal workout unpackaging and swatching this entire collection because you know Odin's Eye has like shrink wrap on top of all of their outside cardboard so you gotta get through that first for like every single shadow right along with the palette separately and then you gotta open the actual cardboard boxes which are pretty tight and hard to open so I had to either almost rip it apart or use scissors to help me then the swatching itself was like trying to get the perfect angling with the sun but then still capture all the shadows in the frame. I had to angle my body in a weird position because I was shooting from above. It was just an actual workout, okay? Like I had to spread it out over three lunch breaks on three separate days. I was sweating by the end of each session. No exaggeration. Like I really needed a whole shower and nap each time. Okay, so I'm going to briefly walk you through how I achieved this look today and then I'll be back with my final thoughts on the entire collection. I'm taking poinsettia and hot cocoa from Odin's Eye Merry Christmas palette and we're just going to use these to lay down that red hot fiery matte base for this look. Then in the center left of my lid where I left it kind of blank and lighter, I'm gonna lay down a mixture of M004 Angela and then M006 Judy. So these look like kind of similar in the pan. They're both lavender shades, but since they are multi-chromes, once you swatch them on the skin, they do have quite a different effect. This one is Angela and this one's Judy. You see how Angela is much more muted, grayish blue leaning, while Judy is more of that true metallic lilac so yeah i want like a layer of that more muted angela down first and then i'll go back on top and accentuate it with judy 
But this Angela shade, by the way, is like the most mushy gel-like consistency out of all the shadows in this in the multi-chromes as well as just the entire collection overall you see how i already pretty much hit pan over here because it's such a thick putty like consistency i have to really dig around to get some of it on my brush yeah the inconsistency in texture and whatnot throughout this entire collection is pretty wild pretty wildly varied from shadow to shadow which i'll get more into later but just adding on judy now for that really intense lilac shift we'll do the same combo on the lower lash line although you'll see that it's kind of the effect is slightly different against bare skin as opposed to when I have the red eyeshadow as a base. So that's another thing to keep in mind about these shadows or I guess just multi-chromes in general. Like the shifts and the reflex can really change dramatically depending on what you pair it with. Then I'm going in with this super duper intense glitter sequin red. This one is called Leon, which I love that name because it's close to Leo, which is what I am. But yeah, this is a super glittery sequiny red with a black base almost and i'm just going to add that to the areas where i had the darker matte red eyeshadow before this reminds me of that red dress dancing emoji like the woman in the red dress this is that but in an eyeshadow form last but not least we're going to take this light turquoise blue shimmer shade here called jacob jacob have i loved and that's gonna be our inner corner kind of pop of contrasting color to this look even all of that is still not enough drama for me so i'm going to top it all off with this aurora gemstone in the inner corner there just one i don't know if you can see it really kind of blends perfectly into that light turquoise color i don't know if turquoise is even the right word it's almost like a tiffany's blue and now we're back here we have the finished look so as you can see i went very very simple and neutral with the rest of my makeup to let the boldness of this eye look shine through i think it's very fitting for a chinese new year actually with the focus on the red and then that pop of turquoise in there to add a little bit gen z flair oh yeah happy year of the rabbit by the way for everyone out there who celebrates lunar new year as you can see i have my rabbit ears here to join in the festivities although i'm probably going to take them off soon because the jingling noise from these bells are driving me crazy so now let's get into my final thoughts and they may be a little shocking a little controversial even to myself but you guys know i have to keep it 100 with my reviews i swear i'm not just doing this on purpose to be contrarian to everyone else's opinions. Yeah, I was just nowhere near as impressed as I thought I would be with this collection based on all of the hype surrounding it. I think that's a good way to put it. So let's just highlight some of the positives first. So these are very nice and pretty looking. Okay, I mean, that's pretty obvious. That goes without saying. The concept and execution of the collection I think is pretty great. Functional, visually appealing with the jewel theme and the clear plastic palettes. I even love this little basket weave type of pattern baked into the eyeshadows themselves. Although they do get ruined pretty quickly once you start swatching the shadows, so that's kind of a bummer, but I mean, nothing that we can do about that. I'm a huge fan of jewel tones myself, which is what is featured a lot in this collection, obviously, hence the name. Although I will say I was a little taken aback after I organized everything into their respective palettes. So this first palette is all of the multi-chromes right there's only 12 so it fits perfectly into a single palette and then i just split the remaining 30 shimmers into three palettes going in order of one two three you know all the way up to 30 so this one is one to 12 and then 13 to 24 25 to 30 so i was kind of taken aback to see that the second palette here 13 to 24 is almost all blues and greens this empty space in the corner here remember they forgot to send me number 13 so saving it for that but i mean yeah this is basically like all blues and greens and then it even spills over into the third palette like we get more of a little more of the mossy foresty greens here no complaints about that personally because i do love those oceanic blue green teal type of shades but just as a note for your reference the shimmers at least do offer a lot more variety in this color story over other color families like pinks and purples and such now that is where it ends for me when it comes to actual 
praises that I can sing about this collection. And I wouldn't call all of the following things cons necessarily, but let's just say that there are some major caveats for sure. Unfortunately, I do believe that the caveats in this collection far outweigh the cons. I would say definitely take note of the following points that I'm going to lay out. You can take them as like buyer beware warnings to help you make the best decision. So number one, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. The pricing for these is the most exorbitant thing I've ever seen for an indie brand or any type of brand really. And this is shocking to me that price is kind of like such a strong driving factor in my review this time because I usually don't even consider the price when I'm buying makeup. I'm used to paying all different price points for makeup, you know, to me it's just the name of the game. Whatever pricing or consumer bracket a certain brand wants to place themselves into, that's their prerogative. That's my prerogative. That's my And then we as the consumer, we have the right to decide whether or not it's worth the gamble, right? So normally what I do is I just go completely with my intuition on what I'm drawn to, what I'm magnetized to. I'm not the kind of person that budgets like, oh, I can only spend this amount of money on fun stuff in the month of January. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not that kind of budgeting girl. If you are, more power to you. But for me personally, I prefer to just focus on manifesting more money if I really desire something rather than restricting myself. Anyway, I say all that to say that I admittedly didn't really pay attention to the price initially when I purchased these. Um, I just saw Odin's Eye is coming out with a new launch, looks beautiful, looks unique, throw everything in the cart and let's go, right? That was basically as much thought as I put into this. However, it was always in the back of my mind like, okay, even with the launch time discount on the bundles, and then on top of that, you could actually stack influencer codes. So I always use Judy's code for 10% off. So I got the bundle deal and then 10% off that additionally. And then even if you don't count the extra empty palettes that I also purchased, my total came to over $300 for 42 eyeshadows total. And I always had it in the back of my mind like, okay, something seems very, very off about that. $300, I have had orders go up to that much in the past, but those have typically always been like huge multi-brand, you know, multi-product hauls, not just like a single collection of 42 shadows full stop. So lo and behold, go figure, when I went back to really check like the unit prices on the individual shadows, and like maybe those of you who are not as reckless with your money as I am, maybe that was the first thing that you guys did, but for me, I just did it like before filming this video and it all made sense to me. So the shimmers are not that bad. They retail for $6.90 USD a piece. I mean, that's like whatever, not the cheapest, but not the worst. But the multi-chromes, okay, these are priced at $14.90 USD a piece. I'm sorry, but that is like the price of a whole palette. In fact, I think most of ColourPop's palettes with 10 or less eyeshadows in them cost less than that. Yeah, and you know, there are a few standout shades in the multi-chromes. I would say like mostly this top row up here and then maybe also Judy and then also this um, royal purple down here as well as the red. So yeah, there are a few standout shades in the multi-chromes, don't get me wrong, but nothing that warrants a $15 price tag. Not a single one. I'm so sorry, but that's just my honest feeling. Now there's another thing that I noticed that I'm not sure if it's just because I'm not that well versed in multi-chromes in general. I don't really identify as holosexual or chromosexual, whatever you guys call yourselves. So maybe it's just like I don't know what to look for when it comes to critiquing chrome shades. Or maybe it's like, you know how some people are colorblind. Maybe I'm just chrome blind. When I look at all the swatches in this collection side by side, I can't really tell the difference at all in finish between the multi-chrome and shimmer formulations. Am I just crazy or do you know what I'm talking about? Like it's really, there might be a subtle difference but it's really not that much to, not worth differentiating almost in my opinion. Of course there's a few obvious ones like the lighter shades up here. It's much more obvious the way that they flip and shift in the light but then when you get to the darker colors down here like this red for example, I have this on my eyes today, right? And the whole time, like through application, through this entire filming process, I have yet to notice anything multi chromey about it. I just don't see it. I mean, I love this color. This was the one that I was actually most excited to try, but to me, it's just an ultra sequiny red. You know, there's no flip as far as I can tell, unless you count the fact that it kind of has like a blackish base. So I don't know if that counts. Like, okay, it's a black and red duochrome, but even then it just looks like straight up red glitter on a black base to me. You know, I fail to see where the multi-dimensionality comes in. I even swatched these Odin's Eye multi-chromes against my Cleonad chromes because those are the only other multi-chrome shadows that I own just to see if I am tripping. <laughs> and it turns out I'm not, okay? So the Cleonad 
dragon fruit palette has four chrome shadows out of the 13 in the palette the rest are just like metallics and velvet satins and whatnot but again if you didn't tell me beforehand which ones were the chrome ones i would not be able to pick them out with my own naked eye they all just look super shiny and glittery to me that's it i will say that the odin's eye formula on the whole does look slightly like glossier and wetter than the cleonade which is more on the dry side not dry but compared to odin's eye it is so personally i do prefer this finish of the odin's eye formula i think it comes off more modern and glamorous more compatible as well with k-beauty or asian type makeup styles anyway the point of this story is to establish that either a i am just chrome blind or b maybe all of the hype around multi-chrome shadows is cap to begin with and i'm inclined to believe that the latter is true but hey don't get mad at me, okay? Who am I? So let's talk about the formulas. Um, the multi-chromes are really, really smooth and buttery. It definitely feels more of a wet, like, gel slash putty consistency, which is distinctly different from the shimmer formulation. The shimmers are very, very smooth and soft to the touch as well, but it has more of that drier, like, traditional pressed powder, pressed glitter type of feel. I found there to be huge inconsistencies between the different shades in the multi-chrome formula. You can just see from looking at a glance. These few select shades here, you can see how they have huge indents in them simply from me just swatching or using the product minimally. And that's because these are significantly more soft, really like almost a pure gel slash putty as compared to the rest. I mean, look at this lilac one over here. I literally hit pan on it already because that's how soft and malleable it is and that's how much i had to dig to get the product to transfer onto my finger the only other product i've ever experienced that with is a super shock highlighter so it's this hedwig super shock highlighter from ColourPop and harry potter collaboration see here this pan is not because of me adhering to a diligent project pan plan it's because the formula is so soft that yeah it just moves right to the side when I swatch it. I don't know exactly what that says about some of these multi-chromes from Odin's Eye, the fact that they really mimic the ColourPop Super Shock formula so much, in consistency at least. Like, I will say that there's no Super Shock shade that I've come across at least that has the same amount of dimensionality and vibrancy as the Odin's Eye shadows, but um, yeah, it's basically like a slightly amped up Super Shock formula for $15 a piece. So for the shimmers, on the other hand, um, I will say they are much more consistent across the board in terms of formulation than the multi-chromes. But again, it's not perfect, right? Unlike the multi-chromes that were a little too soft and malleable, the shimmers overall, I did find a lot of them to just be like really soft and crumbly, which again, I think you can tell just by looking at the pans. For a lot of them, the top layer would just completely crumble off at the first touch when I went to swatch. And you have to be super careful to kind of you know, press the loosened powder back when you're done, which is fine, but again, to me, that's like, you need to lower the price then if there's gonna be huge caveats like this, and I do consider this kind of a huge caveat. Luckily for me, none of my shadows actually broke in transit, but I did hear stories from other people that they had that experience and i also heard that like the initial release of this jewel shine collection was supposed to be earlier but it actually got delayed because of this issue of the eyeshadows being too soft or too loose to withstand heavy travel so anyway i'm just gonna leave it at that for my review i think i hit every point that i wanted to touch i personally don't regret buying this collection but i don't know you might like you honestly might especially if you're one of those people that is careful about budgeting for um only a select few releases that you're gonna pick up every year if you're expecting the odin's eye jewel shine collection to do all your taxes and bring a party from another dimension to you i'm sorry to be the one to tell you that that's just not gonna happen if you must satisfy your curiosity i feel like your best bet is to pick maybe two or three three shades tops of the multi-chrome shadows you can get the shimmers if you want to but i just feel like the standout formula here is the multi-chrome formulation like i mentioned i do slightly prefer the finish of these over the cleonade multi-chrome formulation so do with that information what you will but yeah i would say at max just pick out the three top multi-chromes that really call out to you you could honestly just stop at one or zero maybe one of the shimmers if it's really in that color that you've been searching forever but cannot quite seem to find other than that i just don't think it's worth it okay like 15 dollars for a single eyeshadow come on even with the high-end brands that i know you know a lot of the high-end brands charge upwards of 20 dollars per single eyeshadow but that is why i don't buy singles from those high-end brands 
okay? Not even RMK. There's just no way for me to say that it's worth it to drop $15 a piece on a single multi-chrome shadows. I don't care how blinding or magical they claim to be. From an economic perspective, there is just no justification, okay? It pains me to say this because I love Odin's Eye, but I said what I said. Thank you guys so much for watching as usual, and I will talk to you later in another video. Bye! 12 seconds later. Just to reiterate again, because this is how much I cannot get over the crazy pricing in this collection, this set of 12 multi-chrome single eyeshadows retails for $178.80 on their site at full price. Even with the bundle price that I purchased this at, which was $143.02, that was already ridiculous to me. Like, essentially, you're getting this one palette for $140. Which, by the way, that deal is not even available anymore. The bundle said are sold out the launch specials are over so at this point if you wanted to purchase all of the multi-chromes in this collection you would have to pay the full price of $178.80 plus the extra 12 pan palette on top of that because it doesn't come for free so you would be paying over 180 US dollars for this singular tiny eyeshadow palette of 12 shadows like make it make sense wasn't it just a few weeks ago that you guys were complaining about how this Pat McGrath mega palette of 16 shades okay so like four extra shades already than this one wasn't everyone just complaining about how this was not worth $80 and then now everyone wants to turn around and act like it's normal to pay $180 for a 12 pan palette of multi-chromes you know granted they are all multi-chromes it's not like a mix of mattes and shimmers and whatnot but I have a feeling this is not shade but I have a feeling that a lot of the people that are reviewing this on YouTube have received this collection in PR and are there therefore desensitized to how crazy the pricing for this collection actually is which is why I do think it's valuable to give you a review from a perspective of a person that does not get PR you know I pay for pretty much all of my makeup that I review on this channel so I'm literally in the same boat as you guys in terms of the full experience right paying for the item waiting for shipping dealing with any defects or problems with my order like i had with the missing shimmer shadow this time and then subsequently having to reach out to the brand's customer service to see how they would handle the situation which by the way odin's eye customer service is top notch there's only two little blips that i've had so far ordering from odin's eye the missing shadow this time around and then last time during the soul money 2 collection release one of my blushes came shattered each time odin's eye was very quick very responsive and they sent out a replacement for me right away so they do have excellent customer service i mean I i'm a huge fan of them as a brand you know that has never changed and it still hasn't with this collection but like 15 dollars for one single eyeshadow though